Uh, yeah, so for today's talk, again, it's called What the Heck is Side Fact? And initially, so this is actually a German word. Uh, it's really hard to pronounce. I, I'm pretty sure I'm not pronouncing it correctly. So I included the official uh, pronunciation provided by the by the 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 gem author. Okay. So like just I'm just gonna play it. Zeitwerk. So, uh I I don't know whether you guys heard it. Uh yeah, so so it's pronounced as side fact. Or, uh yeah. Then so before we start talking about this Ruby gem, uh let's first talk about code loading in Ruby. So I'm sure like code loading is uh every language has code loading because you you hardly write all all the things in one file, right? It's not your file's gonna be like more than a thousand lines, definitely, if you have everything in one file. So then so then if you are if you have done a Ruby project and then you have uh, more than one file to keep things like modular or things easy to read, easy to follow, then you will definitely run into this thing. How do I load code in Ruby? So the, the most common way usually is just use require relative because you want to you just load the code relative from where your file is, the, the file that yeah, the entry point is. And then you just uh, from there it's like the it's like how our file system is you just dot then slash dot dot it go up or just put a, 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 a folder name or, and then, or a file name, then you will just load the file relative from where your file is. However, in, uh, in Ruby, because Ruby is object-oriented, so we have classes, we have uh, modules that acts as namespacing, then you can nest multiple modules, you can nest as many as you want, then the load order in Ruby becomes very important. So in that case, in this case, if you want to do a A colon colon B pattern, right, and you immediately just try and load that file, right, Ruby will just throw you a name error. It will tell you that, oh, I cannot find A. Then, then why are you loading a A colon colon B? It's as if that you you tell me A is already there. So then it will just throw you a name, uh, name error. So if you want to load something like that, it's either you do a, you load a file that contains the module A first, then you load the file that contains the class A colon colon B. If not, then you, you have to do it like what I have in this example here is to explicitly nest the modules in your file. So instead of, uh, like in this case, I have demo one, Singapore food. Instead, you have to do this instead of doing class demo one, colon, colon, Singapore, colon, colon. Yeah, so that will not work. And another thing about file loading is that Ruby doesn't care about naming convention. So you, you just tell Ruby to load the file, you will just load whatever is in the file. It doesn't, it doesn't care whether like your file has the, the class that you, that you expect to be there or not. It just loads the file. It's on the programmer to make sure that the correct code is loaded into the file. So, so then, okay, then there's the normal, normal code loading, right? Then, in Ruby, there's actually something called module autoload. So there's this uh, autoload method that is provided by the, the Ruby language itself. Okay, so it's native to the Ruby language. So how this autoload works is that you do, you call this method autoload. For example, in the, in the first image on the top left, you have demo two, you call autoload Singapore, and then you put a file path there. So how it works is that now you are uh, creating a sort of creating a constant Singapore under the namespace of demo2. And the moment demo2 uh, Singapore is referenced, right? Ruby will load that file, load that Singapore.rb file for you. And, and if you just compare the number of lines that you have to write between this and require, right? It's actually probably the same law because you have to require all the files now. Then here you have to also auto load and then tell, tell Ruby like what are the files that need to write. 
And then, but the only plus point here is that probably is the eagle loading. So you only load when it's needed. And then your 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 boot time of your app or your your yeah your app or your code can be faster. So but the amount of code that you write is still or still an amount number of lines of code you write is still the same. And then also another thing is that you put auto load Singapore, then you put a file there, right? So all it does is demo to Singapore, you call demo demo to Singapore is reference, you will just load that file. But it doesn't care whether your file has that class or not. What if you load that file, but then the file doesn't even have the class? Then you will then then you will just crash there. So for this autoload method, it also doesn't care. So it's quite like quite stupid one lah. Uh, all it, all it, all it does is like do the 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 eager loading, but it's on the programmer to to do to make sure that the correct classes are loaded. So this is module autoload. So then, like I said just now, uh, there's this like name error thing. Like we want, we all want to look like write. Okay, not okay. I, I cannot say we all want to. Like to me, it, it feels like cleaner to just write class demo tree colon colon Singapore colon colon food instead of do the triple nesting of the module module then a class, right? But if you try and write it like that, but you don't have demo tree or you don't have Singapore loaded. Uh, Ruby will just call, show you a name error, like I mentioned just now. And then, and then this is the same for the, 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 the two code loading method that I mentioned before. So it's really, really at the end of the day on the programmer to make sure that the namespace are loaded already in memory before they can use such a way to declare their, their class names. So then, we talk about file loading or auto loading, right? But what about file reloading? So I think this is maybe a bit same for every language is that you load the, the file into memory already. Then if you go and edit the code a bit, then you have to control C to cancel the, the running instance. Then you have to rerun, reload, rerun the code, which loads the new code into memory and then run and then, then you will see the new behavior. So then, uh, how reloading is not something that is uh, supported out of the box for Ruby. Then it might become very frustrating if you have like huge, uh, huge project, and then you are like doing development right, like into the into the flow, and then you are just like typing a lot of code. Then you have to keep constantly cancel and rerun, cancel and rerun, cancel and rerun all the time. So then, so so at the end of the day, like code loading can become very complicated, especially when your project becomes very big. You edit your files a lot, you did create files, a lot of files, and right, and then you are constantly trying to uh, uh, build feature on the fly. So it's, it becomes very complicated. So here comes like this gem called Sidepack, which can alleviate all this for you, and is essentially a code loader for Ruby and it supports auto loading and reloading out of the box. And, and one more extra thing that it gives to you is the file name to class module name convention that, uh, that many Ruby people follow and uh, especially so in Rails. Um, so the, the convention is that the file name should be the snake case of the class and module name, yeah. So, so, and then uh, one interesting point to note, which even made me like try and find out what, what, what is this gem right? is, uh, is that it, become, it became the default auto loader in Rails 6. So in Rails, we always, we, the, the files are always automatically like, loaded and automatically reloaded, right? And uh, Sidefact side gives you this thing for, uh, for that you can use in your own project as well. So, so essentially, like problems that you solve, you don't need to worry that you're forgetting to require files. Like if you have huge projects, you constantly creating and deleting files. You don't have to forget to add that one require at the correct place, or you don't have to forget to delete that extra require at, at some places that you, 
um, the, the file that has been deleted. So you don't need to worry about this. You also don't need to worry that you are requiring, requiring files in the correct order. So like I said just now that the load order is important, especially when you're nesting of uh, namespaces, right? So in this case, later I'll um, talk about it that so in fact, magically just create the module, the namespace, if, you, uh, if it does not already exist. So it magically solves this for you. And then uh, because of the file name convention, you can find code easily. Um, I think if you have been working on Rails uh, code base, you understand like how, uh, because of the convention, how sometimes how easy it is to just find code. Of course, that when there's meta programming, then things might get a bit complicated. But then for basic use cases, pretty straightforward to find, find code. So, so then how to use this? So SciFact is, uh, although like most famously famously used in like Rails, right? but you actually can just use this very easily in your own Ruby projects. It's actually just four lines of code essentially. So in here, if you look at the, the code demo that I have, you just require side fact, you create a new loader instance, you just push the directory and into like the loader and then you just call setup. And what it does is it will just load all the files inside the directory. And you can configure loader to like, to do reloading, eager loading, like some of the options that side fact uh, gives to you. Then, uh, then it will just do everything uh, in that folder. And you have multiple folders that you want to watch and load. You can just call multiple push directory. And then actually, that's just about it. It's like super simple to set up. And you you almost have like all the magic in Rails. Or actually, you will have all the magic that you, that you have in Rails in your normal project. And you just, uh, yeah, you can just get into the flow and code away. Just delete files, create files. Eh, no, actually create and delete files, probably not. But yeah, you can just edit files and then you see your feature magically turn up. So, and then you also get the file name and class name convention. So for me, at least when I try and write my own code without, not in Rails, I, I try to keep the, the convention as much as possible. Like this is like discipline on my part, but then in this case, you, you can just lean on the Ruby gem to, to let you know long whether things are in order. So using it is like super easy. So, uh, so, so when you use this gem, all the namespace are, they call it automatically vivified, which was an, an, an English word that I didn't know until I started like doing, researching this, this thing. So vivified actually means just like bring a life, something like that. So meaning to say that all the namespaces, they are not there, right? It will just auto create for you. So, so you can, so in this example, if you see below, I, I just have like demo for Singapore place. I don't need to have a file or somewhere that creates the demo for um, a namespace to create a Singapore namespace. I mean, it will just automatically create for you. So you can feel very safe and feel free to just like write class names like this. So, yeah, so all, all namespaces are automatically verified. Then you can option to configure inflections also. So the inflections will be the, the, the transformation between file names to, uh, to class name, the, the relationship for the conventions, right? Like sometimes you, you don't want like the, the snake case relationship. So you, you can configure this also. And yeah. Then another thing is there's an option to eager load everything on boot if you want to. So eager load meaning that you just load every file like into memory on boot. Don't even wait for like the auto load, auto load thing. Um, so if you are not uh, worried about like performance, about boot time, and you, you want to just load everything into memory at one go, then you, there's a very simple option to, to just configure this. Then you also have the option to enable reloading. So like, I think this reloading is like the, it's like super awesome. So they, it will automatically like do a file watcher. And then if they detect that your, 
your file has changed, then you will just reload that, that file for you. So, so yeah, there's also an option to enable reloading. So these four are, are like some of the super easy and probably the most useful uh, useful options. And But there are still a bunch of other options you, that you can look up. And so then uh, I, I would think that a very common question would be like, oh, okay, Rails move from uh, Rails autoloader to side fact, right? Then like what, 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 what should you expect? So in, in essence, I feel that uh, if you still want to use the normal Rails autoloader, you can just configure it. Rails, Rails 6, the, the change log actually tells you how you can set it back if you don't want to use the new autoloader. And in normal use cases, you really should not expect any differences. To be, uh, to be honest, Zyfac is closer to the, to the Ruby, like correct way of building namespace and et cetera. So I purposely am not talking about the pitfalls of the original Rails autoloader in this talk because like it's there's like uh, things to there's like enough things to talk about in a talk by itself. So so then like I want to focus on like side fact and how we can bring this Rails magic directly into our own project. Uh and maybe to even just our normal uh Ruby just like play no Ruby projects, lah. No, no framework, no nothing, maybe. Then you, you can, we can easily just bring all this magic over. So, so I, I do have a link here that this, actually this person uh, did an incredible job, like even giving examples about like the pitfalls of the old Rails autoloader. So if you are interested, you can get the link from me or you can just like copy out the, the, the URL is pretty easy to follow. So then uh, for this, I, uh, I referenced uh, quite a few sites um, on just trying to find out about different, different things in, in this topic. Yeah, so there are the references here. And actually that's, that's just the end of my talk. So I hope like uh, you, I think that like bringing this like Rails magic into, into like, your own code or your own project will be very helpful and hopefully uh, you can speed up your development and less less things to worry about and focus more on just writing writing features and yeah and writing yeah awesome stuff okay so that's it for my talk <laughs>